Hey guys, it's Drea. Today I have for you a get ready with me Q&A. I have not done a Q&A in forever. And so I asked you on Instagram, on my Facebook page, and where else? There was some other place I asked. Oh, my community tab on YouTube. Um, what questions you had for me, and I've got a bunch here today, so let's just get into it. I'm gonna be doing my makeup while I'm talking, obviously, so I probably won't talk about the makeup a lot. So you'll just have to look in the description bar below if you want to know exactly what it is that I used on my face. Okay, Abby Harris asks, would you ever have your significant other on your channel to do a relationship Q&A? Um, I've talked about this many, many times. The answer is definitely no. He is not interested at all about being on videos in any way. He's very private. He's the kind of guy who doesn't like even want like Google Alexa in, in the house, you know? Like, not really conspiracy theorist, but <laughs> like concerned about privacy for sure. So no, he um, he would never be on this channel. We do have, <clears throat> remember when that video idea was going around of um, your husband narrates your makeup tutorial? He did that once and he's very, very funny. So I'll try to find that and then link to it below so you could hear his voice if you're really interested. Okay, I did my foundation and then I plucked my eyebrows because he needed to come in here and like make himself wings for lunch. So that took about 15 minutes. All right, so I've got my foundation on. Let's move on to the next question. Um, I kind of talked about this a little bit in one of my last videos, but not a ton. And Megan Howard asked, what do you think of the new branding of KVD Vegan Beauty? So I think my feelings have changed a, a little bit slightly since the last time I talked about it. Um, I was pleased, like pleased that they separated ways with Kat Von D. Um, and she's no longer involved with the brand because I really don't agree with her anti-vaccine stance and a lot of other things. I don't, like I said before in the other video, I don't really know a lot about the anti-Semitism. I haven't looked into it myself other than people say that that's connected to her in some way. So I won't really talk about that, but if that's true, it's obviously really unfortunate. Um, so I'm glad they parted ways. She just doesn't seem like a great person to be running a brand. But anyways, I, I think it's great that vegans have more choice when it comes to makeup that they want to use and can use. And so let's say you have somebody who's vegan who vehemently disagrees with her stance of course they're not going to want to use her brand and maybe now they can and i think that's a good thing um will i start buying it maybe maybe not I, it used to always be really really good quality especially the eyeshadows and i loved her eyeshadows but then it seems like over the last couple of years the reviews on the things that she's been putting out have been worse and worse and worse so i don't know like i and i i'm not really buying a lot of makeup right now anyway so for me personally, it doesn't really affect me right now. Um, the one thing that is different from the last time I talked about this is they came out with something that said like what the KVD stands for. And what is it like kindness, veganism, and something else? I don't know. It just, it, it sounded really dumb. Like they were just reaching for some reason to keep, keep the KVD in it but the the branding didn't really make a lot of sense and i was just like side eyeing that going what so that's the only difference i'll put it on the screen because right now i can't think of what it was but it, it just it sounded so stupid okay uh diana hi diana some of you that have asked me questions i recognize you from like so many interactions over my channel over the years. Um, okay, Diana says, what has been your favorite thing about your new community? I assume you mean like where we moved to. Uh, my favorite thing has been the weather and the people. I feel like that's true with so many places. Weather and people make such a difference um, to where, to your happiness level, where you are. Um, so in general, I feel like people are friendlier, more welcoming. Definitely we made a ton of friends. And this being our second winter here now, um, it's just night and day from living in Southern Ontario where it's just snow, 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 cold, cold, cold all the time. So it's been really, really nice. Ruth Foley says, I want to know all about Bella. Well, there's not much to say other than she's 
my obsession and I love her so much. And if you don't know who I'm talking about, that's my dog. One of my dogs. I have two dogs, Maddie and Bella. And Bella is the sweetest, loving, most loving dog in the world. And she is loyal and the most perfect companion. Um, and I just love her. She's an Australian Shepherd and she's just the best. And I think, I don't even want to think about it, but if we ever had to get another dog years and years in the future, um, I would only ever get Australian Shepherds now because she's just been a joy. And Maddie is neurotic and annoying <laughs> and underhanded and sneaky. Maddie does this thing where if you're petting Bella, Maddie will go and get a toy because Maddie knows they're, they're coming now because they hear their names and they heard the word toy. Maddie knows that if Bella um, sees a T-O-Y, that Bella will go for the T-O-Y every time and so she'll stop being pet. So Maddie will distract Bella with the toy and then Maddie will wait around to be pet by you instead because now Bella has the toy. That's the kind of thing Maddie does. Um, Ange Witch says, how have you been doing lately? How's life? What are you excited about this upcoming spring? What have we been doing lately? I've just been working. <laughs> Work cleaning the house and uh, karaoke. That's literally my life right now. But you know what, it's fine. It's keeping me happy because I, I have a nice social life in there. Um, but other than that, nothing. There's no vacations happening, no plans, no visitors as far as I know. It's all good though. Um, and then what am I excited about this spring? I don't know. Oh, well my husband's starting a job. So I'm just hoping that that goes really, really well and that will kind of like finally cement um, everything that we've been doing out here because he has um, been finishing school while he was out here for a new career path. So that's finally seems like it's kind of over and now he's actually going to be working. So that's going to be exciting. Wendy says, I just want to hear about what you're doing. Love when you just sit and talk real life as a genuine person. Thank you, Wendy. I appreciate that. I like watching gen genuine people as well on YouTube. Um, I always talk about being genuine at my work because we work in like clothing sales and I just find that the more you connect with people, um, the more trusting they are of your opinion and happier they are when they leave because they have found things that they actually love because you actually care about them. Uh, like, and it has to be genuine. It can't be fake caring. <laughs> Anyways, thank you, Wendy. <clears throat> okay, this is a really good question leading into the next thing. Um, what did I cover? Okay, I don't know if I'm going to be able to say your first name properly, but I know you watch my videos a lot. It's Idina or Adina Severston. Um, she's asking, how do you choose which eyeshadow palette to use from your collection? What is your thought process and inspiration? Okay, this is a great question. So I just put on my two shadows that I'm using for my Tarte Pro palette, which are in my panning project. Okay, how do I pick a palette? Typically, I will just look at my collection and go, what have I not used in a long time? And I'll just let my eyes be my guide and be like, oh, that thing. Or sometimes, um, I don't know, like if I'm filming a video about my palettes or something and I'm talking about it and I'll remind myself, oh yeah, that's something that I really love. Um, so, okay, I'm going to start using this. This is a Violet Boss Coral Crush palette. The other night I went through my palettes and I actually pulled a bunch of them and I did that and I was like, what have I not used in a long time? Let me pull out like four or five things and just put them to the side. So when I used to do my shop, my stash videos, I would, I started doing this thing I called a side hoe bucket. Um, and then, and then I thought maybe it'd be better to call it a side chick bucket. But anyway, I was pulling stuff for shop, my stash that I wanted to use multiple times, but the side chick bucket was really just stuff that I wanted to use one time. And as long as I used it one time in the month, then I was satisfied and I was happy that I was getting use out of this stuff. So that's kind of like what I'm talking about with pulling stuff like the other night. Um, I went through kind of every one of my drawers and I just took a real quick glance at stuff and went, okay, what am I seeing right now that I haven't used in a while that I want to? And I pulled out a couple palettes and I pulled out a couple, um, 
like highlighters and a couple blushes and I was like you know what I haven't used this in forever I love this product and I just kind of like let myself be re-inspired by just looking at my stuff so that's how I do it uh, a few other probably good ways to do it would just be like um, search on YouTube like for eyeshadow palette tutorials of things that you own and watch how other people use them and try to get inspired by that. I feel like that is how I actually got into eyeshadow palettes way back when and eyeshadow palette tutorials are not really something that are super popular like in terms of views I just know that from the ones that I put out that people really don't watch them and it's a shame because you know you can learn stuff and people just want to be entertained now I feel like on YouTube as opposed to learning things you know like I feel like before there was a lot of teaching and a lot of learning and now it seems like YouTube is just full of entertainment which is fine things evolve whatever I like talking and entertaining you guys as long as you are entertained by this kind of thing um but in terms of like YouTube and and videos I feel like that's kind of a long lost art or a long lost thing that is not popular anymore is teaching videos but they do exist and if you want to get inspired you can do that um, another thing that would definitely inspire like has inspired me in the past is palette bingos type things and um, multiple palette bingos which is when you take like three or four palettes or five and you you randomly pick one shade out of each and you'll get something you really never expected um, and sometimes it turns out really really good sometimes it turns out eh, kind of like what happened here and then um, other times you're like wow I never would have done that otherwise I never would have thought to do that and it turned out really really cool um, this coral crush palette is is a favorite I love it it performs so nicely and it was such um, like nobody really made a big deal about this palette when it came out last year. I feel like it kind of had its, I don't know, it didn't even really have a moment. Nobody really talked about it, but it's so good. And I only bought it because I saw it in store and was able to swatch it in store and loved the colors and the way they looked in the swatches. And that's why I actually bought it. But otherwise I, I was going to pass it by, but this has turned out to be one of my, like a palette that I love. And every time I wear, I get, so many compliments on it and lately I'm kind of really struggling with how I am going to keep a channel about makeup when I'm not buying makeup because let me tell you something for those of you out there that struggle with shopping problems um, the less and less makeup I buy the less and less makeup I want to buy and that has been really surprising for me because I I've had a makeup obsession for like five, five years and I'm literally mixing like three different shades on my eyelid if you're wondering why I'm going over my eyelid so many times. I'm just kind of creating my own shade here. Um, anyways, yeah, I've, I bought so much makeup over the last five years and um, slowly but surely buying less has led to me wanting less. And so my struggle now is like, well, okay, that's great and everything but what about your channel? <laughs> like, cause I'm not buying anything new. So I'm kind of like, well, are they going to care about watching me if I'm not buying and using new makeup? You know what I mean? So, and I know there are those of you that are hardcore and I can already see your responses. I know which ones, ones of you that you are, um, who are going to say yes. But the truth is there's not like, you don't represent everybody. So there are, there are going to be people that, are not going to be happy with just watching like makeup videos about last year's and two years ago's makeup. I'm gonna go through some of the questions that were asked on Instagram. Um, by Michaela Eve said, how many kids do you have? I have three, all boys. Um, Red Appleton, who's my cousin, um, says, what is the best mascara that won't flake off? You know what's funny? By the way, I'm going to try to do my eyebrows and talk at the same time, which who knows how this is going to go. Um, but anyways, sh I have never really had a problem with flaking with mascara ever. And I don't know why that is. I feel like it's a problem that people have 
Um, but I've never had that issue. What, why is that? It seems like something that wouldn't really be affected by skin type or like anything to do with your genetics. So why would that be different on different people? Do you know what I mean? So I don't really have an answer because the answer is I've never had a, a blaking type of mascara. I guess the only other thing I would say about it is just make sure you're not keeping your mascara too long because if you have um, one that's dried out, obviously then a drier mascara is going to have flake, flaking eventually. Um, but I also really prefer wet mascaras. Like I like them really, really wet and not dry at all. So maybe that has something to do with it too. I feel like lately I just cannot get my eyebrows to a place that I like them. They always seem like they end up really, really sloppy. I'm not super happy with my eyebrows for like the last six months. Alex, my friend, um, who, Alex, how come you haven't changed your Instagram name? She changed her YouTube name to Alejandra uh, Lizette, which is her name, um, but she did not change her Instagram to that, um, and it's still One Beauty Addict, which was, was her old, YouTube name. So Alex, why not? Why have you left it that way? Maybe it's, maybe you can't. I don't know how Instagram works with changing your name. So she asks, what's the shortest you have gone with your hair? And this is a great question because I have a history uh, with my short and long hair. My mother used to cut my hair when I was young and she used to cut it really short and I hated it because People used to think I was a boy. Like I was mistaken for a boy so much. And um, being like, I describe myself as ultra feminine. <laughs> like I really like being a, a girl and I really like girly, girly things. So for me, being mistaken for a boy and having short hair was like mortifying and, and totally embarrassing. For some people it might not be, but for me it always was. I don't like this eyebrow either. They are completely different right now. Anyway, she used to cut my hair constantly. Too short, too short. And I remember like in high school, like I started growing my hair out and it was all good. Um, and then I had this boyfriend and he really liked short hair. So one day I decided, I actually saw a picture in a magazine and it was Susan Sarandon, who was a babe, um, especially back then and she had this really kind of short but like curly hair and it was so cute she looked so beautiful and i thought i want this and so i took this picture into the hairdresser but the thing was my hair isn't curly so they cut my hair and it just ended up being like short again like pretty short and i was just like okay <laughs> like that was a mistake so then i started growing it out again um and i have basically kept it long ever since then that was in ninth grade so that's the last time i ever had short hair and i would never have short hair again it's just not me i don't like it on me and i it looks good on some people um i think there's a very certain type of person that it really suits but it's not me so Ariel.K, who is lovely, if you're not following her on Instagram, you should. She has a fitness Instagram as well. Um, she's, she's hot. Anyways, um, she's actually a friend of mine back from Ontario. So she says, my eczema has been so bad. What's a good natural makeup line that I could look into? So I don't really know the answer to this because eczema, um, my son, my oldest son has really, really, really bad eczema. And the only way he, well, the only way he's ever wanted to manage it is with those steroid creams. He doesn't want to look into anything natural. Um, I tried to at one point and I was like buying him certain things and I, he never even touched them or used them. He was like, no, I'm just using my steroid cream and that's it. So I don't really have an answer. Um, I don't really, there, there's nothing... I don't really know a lot about eczema, so I wish I had an answer, but I, the reason I wanted to include this question still is because I'm sure that there are those of you out there that have the answer. So can you please put it down in the comments if you know of any good 
products for eczema or if you suffer from eczema what makeup do you like the best especially i assume she's talking about like for her face like foundations and primers and that kind of things can you guys put it down below that would be very helpful coley my friend nicole says do you think we will get ulta in canada anytime soon and if so do you think you shop there or shoppers more this is such a good question nicole um so i do think that we are going to get ulta soon because it's been rumored for like especially the last year that it's coming um and i really hope more than anything that there is like an online store for canadians for ulta because obviously it's you know brick and mortar stores are not going to be popping up in every city and every province anytime soon um so will we see an online store that's what i really really hope for um, and will I shop there or shoppers more? That's, that's the question because for those of you that don't know, Shoppers Drug Mart has the best point system. I have got so much free stuff over the years just from collecting points. And the thing is, you don't just buy makeup in Shoppers. You can buy, it's, it's a huge pharmacy. It would be very akin to like a CVS um, or a Walgreens. So, and it, like there's grocery in it. There's um, the pharmacy itself, there's like household goods, like cleaning supplies and like baby things and health food stuff. So you can buy everything there and then you get points that you can redeem for makeup or anything you want to redeem them for. I bought my kids a Wii years ago. So there's so much you can redeem for. So, but I have heard that Ulta's point system is also very, very good. So, you know, but the thing is about that is you can only redeem for makeup. You can't redeem for other things. So sometimes I don't always redeem for my myself and I redeem for things for my family. So we'll see. But I either way, I think it's only a win win because Sephora and their point system is garbage. OK, and Nicole also asked me another question on she asked me one question on Facebook and one question on Instagram. If you're not following me on Facebook, I do have a page. Um, for about, I want to say a year there, I did nothing with it, and I've started now posting more on it. Um, it's just Drea CN on Facebook, and um, I'm not just posting like when I put videos up. I'm trying to post more like memes and things I find interesting, and I mean, if you guys want to post up there too, I'm pretty sure you're able to. Facebook pages are really different than groups. And Facebook pages are obviously very different than like your regular account. Um, they're kind of weird in the back end, like how you manage them. So I'm still trying to figure it out, but I am trying to figure it out for you guys. So anyways, I did post over on my Facebook this, this same question. So she said, if you had to choose, would you rather have to wear foundation a shade too light or a shade too dark? I think that's a really good question as well. Um, I would probably, and, and those of you that would do the opposite, chime in why, because I, I'd like to know like your thoughts. But for me, I would say a shade too light because then you can warm it up with bronzer. Um, too dark and you kind of have to like really blend it into your neck and like make sure everything is covered up. Even sometimes the difference between the ears and the face will give it away that it's too dark. Um, and sometimes I think it just looks obviously unnatural whereas with a lighter foundation you can um add the bronzer and add like a contour or add uh, blush whatever right you can add the, the dimension back to your face whereas with a darker one i think it's a little bit more difficult um but if you have one or the other you can also mix foundations so if you have one that's too dark and you still want to use it try to find a foundation in your collection that's lighter and see if that helps by mixing them together. Yasmin Fahim says, will you shop, or sorry, will you film a Shop My Stash again? Um, not in the near future, I don't think. Uh, if you watch my video called Shop My Stash in Reverse, that was the first time that I, in a long time, had decided to let myself be free. So I was shopping my stash for a long, long time. And what I found was that instead of me using more of my collection, I felt like I was actually using less of my collection because I was, have, I was using these things that I pulled multiple times 
Um, and then everything else in my collection was getting ignored. So what I did was the one month I decided I'm going to not shop my stash. I'm going to pull whatever I feel like on any day I feel like it, but I kept track of things. And what I discovered was that I was using the same foundations over and over, the same primers over and over, and I was getting lots of use out of them. Um, and then I was using multiple single shadows and multiple palettes. And I was actually seeing um, more use out of my whole collection as opposed to just more use out of s singular items and I also really felt way more free like I just felt like I was able to be inspired more whereas with um, shopping my stash I was confined to just those things that I had pulled for those three week period and because I'm just too busy to do a weekly shop my stash I can only do it every, you know, two to three or three to four weeks, actually. Um, I was getting less and less use. So, no, I don't think I'm going to go back to that. I was thinking, though, about doing another, um, like, side chick video. Like, here are the things I pulled that I want to use once this month and, and do that. And seeing if you guys like that because that's kind of like a shop my stash but it's not exactly the same it's literally like I want to use this one time so if you want to see that maybe I'll do that and see what the response is to it but there are so many people out there that do a weekly shop my stash or a monthly shop my stash I mean just off the top of my head makeup with Mariella like she does a weekly one I believe um make life your runway she does I want to say it's weekly as well um, but if you just type in shop my stash on YouTube, there are tons of people that do it. So Laura Usher Matson says if you could only pick one eyeshadow for a year, which would you choose and why? Well, first of all, Laura, why do I have to do that? <laughs> like One eyeshadow not even one eyeshadow palette or did you mean one eyeshadow palette or did you just mean one eyeshadow? Because I, I do not think I could answer that. I don't even know if I could answer it for the one eyeshadow palette That is a tough one I always see these um, questions that come up like on Facebook memes and stuff and it's like, well, if you, if somebody had a gun to your head and you had to do this, I'm like, well, who's putting a gun to your head for that reason? Like, what is it, what is it with these weird scenarios that everybody wants answers to? <laughs> but I was thinking about doing like my current top 10 favorite eyeshadow palettes. So let me know, Laura, you specifically, if you'd like to see that. Let me know because then you might get your answers. But I actually did rank my eyeshadow palettes as well last year. I ranked um, all my drugstore eyeshadow palettes and I ranked all my high end. So you can also see like my top ones in those. If you want to go back and watch those as well. Do you ever have when you do fake lashes and you put glue on? Do you ever have your top stick to your bottom? Cause that just happened okay and Yasmin Fahim also asked what's your favorite concealer of all time um, really tough because I have a few but just off the top of my head the Josie Marin argan oil vibrancy concealer is really really good because it's super hydrating and I really have been thinking about repurchasing it soon and then also the Milani conceal and perfect is also really good so that's a good drugstore one that is very full coverage nice consistency and um, also hydrating so right now just off the top of my head those two would be my favorites and then last question another one from Laura she said how did you meet your husband um, I've told this story before but I'll tell it now because I only have two more things to do I'm gonna set my face and also do my lipstick okay so we met in a bar haha <laughs> shocker and it was a karaoke haha <laughs> shocker Actually, not sure why I'm trying to tell the story and do my lipstick at the same time. Like, that's not really easy thing to do. So when I was 18, my friends started going to bars because they were a little bit older than me. I was born in November. They were older than me and they um, wanted to go to this bar one night. And I was like, well, okay, see you later, I guess. Um, they're like, no, come with us, come with us. I'm like, well, I can't. They're like, no, just come in, we'll sneak you in. But um, I actually had no intention of drinking I like literally didn't care about that part of it I just wanted to hang out so they're like just come in just come in I'm like okay fine so walked in there was no person at the door carting because at this bar it was really just like 
either your waitress would card you if you ordered um, alcohol or if you went up to the bartender they could ask you for ID but like just going into the bar nobody was there to card you so anyways I was there it was my first time ever ever in a bar and I was there with my friends of course nervous because I wasn't supposed to be there and we're all standing around this table there were a few guys on that end they knew a couple of them and then there was me and my friends on the other end and somehow like my friends left to go to the bathroom or something and then these people on this side left to go do god knows and then so I was standing on this end and then five feet on the end of that side of the table was my husband and I just looked at him and I thought, I remember thinking to myself, oh great, now I have to talk to this guy. <laughs> and that was basically it. And then we started talking and we were like, got like just got along super well from the beginning. And I just remember the next morning, like I actually wasn't super into him that night, but I remember the next morning waking up with his name on my lips, like thinking his name when I woke up. And that was all she wrote, and then I was obsessed after that. So that's the story of how we met. All right, that is the end of this Q&A. Get ready with me. I'm actually about to film a clothing try-on haul because I had a brand reach out to me and send me some stuff, which was so exciting. So I'm going to film that now, and you'll see that soon. But uh, that's it for today. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below because this was fun, and I would totally be into doing more of these if you guys are. But I hope that you are having a great day. I hope that you're speaking kindly to yourself, especially when you look in the mirror. And I love you guys. I will see you in my next video. Bye.